Hey guys, Adam Zapier here from Manwise. Today I just want to discuss a few things and I'm going to start off talking about this book. Just grab it. Now, it's called Meditation, an in-depth guide. It's by Ian Guller and Paul Bedson. Now, I've been reading this for the last week or so. Now, I've only had a bit of time here and there to read it. So, I'm up to chapter 10, I think it is. And there's still a few chapters to go. I'm maybe just over halfway through the book. Now, what I've found with this book is that the title really is... It's really accurate. It is a very in-depth guide, more so than what I was expecting. I was expecting to be told what to do in order to meditate, the process, basically. Whereas the book goes into detail, it gives an example of how meditation has had a positive effect on different people's lives. And it goes into detail about how the exercises in there will help you, or can help you, and why. Now, I find that much more useful than a book that will tell you step by step how to do something but doesn't explain how you'll feel when you're doing it whereas this book does that i'm just going to put this down now the book not only explains what you might experience but it makes you feel comfortable with that things like for me one thing i've already got from this book i'll just quickly tell you because it's a very common thing I believe is when I started meditating a little while ago I didn't really get right into it because I sat down tried to clear my mind and I believe that I should be able to sit there and stop thinking and when I didn't I got annoyed and frustrated with myself and I thought, okay, meditation's just too hard. Now, one thing I've got from this book already, or very early on, one of the many points, but this is one that I think will help a lot of people that are starting out in meditation themselves, is you can't expect to sit down and just have a clear head when you're used to thinking all the time. And that's not even the goal. The goal in the type of meditation where you don't want to be thinking is not so much to not think at all, but to not give anything to the thoughts, no recognition. You, sorry, that's not right. You do recognize that there's a thought there, but you don't give it any real consideration. You just let it pass. You acknowledge that it's there. And in reading this book, it's made me really understand how that works. And I've put that into my own very limited so far meditation practice and I can see a difference already. What I'm going to do in future vlogs is I'm going to discuss what benefits I'm getting in my own meditation practice, how I'm finding meditation, what, what it's doing for me personally and then later I'm going to go back and I'm going to do a full review of this book and post that up in one of these videos so you guys will get to see how i've benefited from the book how i think the book can benefit you guys and what its strong and weak points are and whether or not you might want to go and read this book yourself so that's it for this book now speaking of books I'm also putting together a book myself at the moment. Now, it's mostly in note form. The other night, I actually started writing the proper manuscript, I guess. Now, this is all pretty new to me. I've always written bits and pieces, but I've never tried to write a book before. So, the idea of this book is what I call the concept of the human zoo. And to me, that is the society that we live in today. If you're watching this, you have access to the internet. So you'd fit in to the category that I'm talking about. Now, the idea of this human zoo is that people are living almost in captivity. Now, I don't want to go into this concept right now because I'll talk about it in more detail 
leading up to the book being finished, but I also don't want to give too much of the book away. Lastly, something that I've been thinking about doing for some time, martial arts. Now, I'm not sure which type I'm going to go with. At the moment, I'm leaning towards doing a couple of different things. I'm thinking about doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and boxing. Now, I'm not sure if that's the way I'll end up going, but that's just the, what I think would be a good combination because you've got boxing, which is very much on your feet, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which is very floor-based, so it covers between the two of them all sorts of situations. Now, I'm hoping I'll never have to use any of those in real life. I've never really been one to get involved in fights and I don't plan to. But you never know what situation may come up where you need to protect yourself or protect a loved one. I mean, I've generally been able to talk my way out of any situations that were a little bit, I guess, leading towards the fight kind of idea. I have been punched in the face once. And even then, I think staying calm and talking rather than reacting meant that I got punched one time and not beaten up totally. So I'd like to do it, not only to protect myself, but because I think it'll be great fitness. Now, that's also something I'd like to mention I'm going to struggle with fitness when it comes to martial arts or any of this kind of stuff. I look relatively fit according to most people, but all I do is go to the gym, lift weights. Obviously, I'm not a huge guy, but I'm a lot stronger than I used to be. My cardio fitness, on the other hand, is terrible. I did try running for a while, and when I did that, I've done some kind of damage to my knees. I'm not sure what, but it's affected obviously when I run, which I just don't do anymore. And when I do things like squats at the gym, which I've been backing off of for a while, that sometimes causes pain now as well, which it never used to before I started running. So cardio fitness, I'm going to need to find a way to work on. And I guess the training for just boxing alone, but both of those techniques I think will give a lot of cardio work. But in the meantime, I think I need to get started. So it's a bit less of a struggle once I start these martial arts kind of trainings. The other thing I have is poor flexibility. Yoga is something I've been considering doing for some time. And I think I'm going to teach myself the basics. And by doing that, hopefully I'll be able to improve my flexibility. Right now, I needed to do an exercise when I tried this a, a few weeks ago. I tried to touch my toes, could not do it. So I did a bit of searching online, found an exercise which helps you a little bit. Did that and then I was able to touch my toes. I was only just able to do it. And it was a struggle. So hopefully I'll be able to improve my flexibility throughout my body, which will, I'm hoping, make training for these other things easier. And I think flexibility training is a really good balance when you're doing weights because weights training seems to take away your flexibility as your muscles, I guess, tighten up. I don't know the scientific stuff behind that, but... It's definitely something I've heard about before, so it's not just me imagining it, but it's something I've experienced as well. Anyway, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit subscribe down below, and I'm also going to put a link in the description to our Facebook page. There's the odd bonus video and updates on there as well. So make sure you follow us over there, and I'll see you guys on the next video really soon.